these people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to a special celebrity edition of Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. And you might recognise them as they won some of the country's toughest quiz shows. They are, of course, the Eggheads. And taking on the might of our quiz goliaths today are the Sugar Lumps. Perhaps more comfortable in the confines of the boardroom than the quiz arena, this team of former apprentice contestants are tackling their most difficult task to date. But at the end, will they be quids in, or will it be a case of sugar lumps? You're fired. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm James McQuillan, and I'm a professional gambler. Howdy, I'm Rafe Baggio, businessman, television personality, and man of mystery. Hello, my name is Christina Grimes. I'm a company director for an events company and business consultancy. My name is Trey Azam, and I am a businessman, public speaker, and broadcaster. Hi, my name is Philip Tiller, and I am Pantsman. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome to you, Sugar Lumps, and thanks for having a go at the Eggheads today. I mean, uh, how do you think this is going to compare to sitting in the boardroom and facing Sir Alan? I think this is going to be a walk in the park. And waiting to see Sir Alan is a bit like waiting to see the headmaster. You know, you know you're in for, for trouble, but uh, I think this isn't bad. He didn't ask you quiz questions, though, did he? <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> so, and a bit like the Apprentice, I suppose. So you've, got, you've got to work as a team, but then, you know... You've got to be in it for yourself as well. You know, I'm here to show that I'm better than all these guys still. <laughs> I'm still smarter than all these. You'll see that. <laughs> I see. So you still go on really, really well. Oh, of course, of course. Of course. Do you, I mean, you know, I'm thinking about this before I came in here because there's a, you know, this lot of all quizzed with each other and against each other over the years. There's a, there's a mastermind club where they all get together. I mean, there's been so many apprentices now. Do you have a little apprentice get together? We've actually had quite a few, but we don't actually remember anything what happened. <laughs> Occasions, this is so. because of all the green tea you were drinking. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, I get it. Okay, well listen, let me tell you how it's going to work. Every day there's £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challenger's chosen charity. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So Sugar Lumps, the challengers won the last game, proving it can be done, and that means £1,000 says you can't beat the eggheads. And our first head-to-head -head battle, as we get underway, is going to be on film and television. Well, who wants to play? Who's going to be first up? Film and television. Um, I'll yeah. give it a go. I'm an avid TV viewer. I have nothing better to do with my time, so I sit and watch television. So I still do that. Film and television for me. Okay. All right, and which egghead would you like to play? It can be any one of these five. It's the first round. I want to take you down to Chinatown, Chris. Would you mean real Chinatown in Limehouse or fake Chinatown in Gerald Street? I've got a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> He all will be revealed in the question room. Okay, could I ask Philip and Chris to take their positions in the question room just to make sure there's no conferring? Well, Philip, we are honoured to have you here. You are, of course, pants man. Uh, is this beginning to affect you as you walk down the street and things like that? People shouting it at you? Uh, just a little bit, yeah, but, you know, still, uh, I enjoy it. And, uh, you know, pants man lives on in millions of bedrooms around the United Kingdom. And uh, I'm happy to be part of that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a strange phenomenon, isn't it? You, you come up with these ideas on the hoof, don't you? And then you, you just have no idea how long they're going to last. Well, I mean, that's it. I mean, I think there's a fine line between being enthusiastic about an idea, and, you know, and crossing that line looking like a complete idiot. And I think, oh, you know, I did do that. Uh, but, you know, it's something I'm very proud of, and people haven't forgotten it, and uh, it lives on. OK, then. Now, Philip, would you like to go first or second? As the challenger, you always get to choose how you want to play it tactically. I'll first set or second set. Yeah, I'd like to go first. <laughs> OK, it's Film and TV, and first question goes to Philip. In Blind Date, the voiceover man who read out a recap of each contestant's answers was always referred to by what name? Our Kevin, our Graham, or our Vince? Um, I did enjoy the show at the time. It gave me a lot of, lot of laughs. See what I did there? Um, and I do recall, if I'm not mistaken, that it was our Graham. Ah, uh, Graham. Do you think, I mean, different generation for you, of course, but, I mean, is that the kind of thing you were attracted to The Apprentice, and, you know, is that the kind of thing you would have gone on for, just for a bit of a laugh? Oh, uh, no, which, actually, you know, Sir Alan worked as a bit of a um, silly black for me and Kate, actually. It was a bit like Blind Dead for me and The Apprentice. I've got to make Kate <laughs> on there, so, no, I don't think I would have given that one a go. I wasn't there uh, wacky enough, I don't yeah. think. With our Alan. Well, it's our Graham in Blind Dead, you're right, yeah. And uh, in that delivered, in that inimitable silly voice, which Philip's better at than me, it gives you a point. And first question... To you, Chris, who plays the part of Professor Hollis Slughorn in the 2009 film Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince? 
Is it Jim Broadbent, Hugh and McGregor, or Jack Davenport? Never seen any of the Harry Potters, never read any of the books. Who looks like a professor? Well, Jack Davenport is Nigel Davenport's son, and I can't see him playing a professor. Likewise, Ewan McGregor. But sort of slightly rotund, professorial gravitas would belong to Jim Broadbent. So he's the one I'm going to have to go for. And you've got the right answer, Jim Broadbent. He's correct as uh, Professor Hollis Slughorn. It's all square and Philip. In which film does Keanu Reeves play a character called Johnny Utah? Is it Point Break, The Devil's Advocate, or Speed? No, I've seen Point Break, and I believe I watched Speed and went for that. Johnny Utah. I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to go with The Devil's Advocate. Okay, Devil's Advocate for Keanu Reeves' character, Johnny Utah, is in Point Break. You said you'd seen Point Break. Yeah. But I uh, didn't remember Johnny Utah there. Chance for the lead for Chris. Toby Esterhazy, Roy Bland, Percy Alleline and Bill Hayden were four suspected double agents in which TV spy drama? The Man from Uncle, The Avengers or Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy? Well, it's not The Man from Uncle because that was sort of a uh, fantasy, if you like, sort of sub-bond parody. Neither was it The Avengers, but it's actually in John Le Carre's Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Yes, it is. That is correct, Chris. Tinker Taylor, soldier spy. I mean, Philip under some pressure. You've got to get this, but you're used to pressure. Got to pull this one out, though. In the 1980s TV sitcom, Take a Letter, Mr. Jones, Rula Lenska portrayed a businesswoman <laughs> with a male secretary played by which comic actor? Is it Ian Lavender, Nicholas Lindhurst, or John Inman? Is that even a show? God, I wasn't was born in 79. Um... I'm absolutely guessing. Um, I'm going to go for Ian Lavender. Take a letter, Mr. Jones, with Rula Lenska in the businesswoman role. A male secretary played by John Inman. John Inman, uh, obviously more famous for Are You Being Served? And it means, there we are, there's the, there's the scores. It means only one there, Philip means we don't need to put another question to Chris. You're in the final round, Chris, and no place for you, Philip. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, as it stands, first blow to the eggheads, knocked one of the sugar lumps out, but uh, only one round gone, three more to go, and our next subject, our next head-to-head -head is politics. Yeah, this is you, Rafe, isn't it? You're the <laughs> politics graduate. I don't want to put you in there. <laughs> it's me. Uh, yeah, I did, I did. I studied history and politics at university. Okay. Um, but well, I'll, I'll let you lock the side. Obviously, the only one that can't play is Philip, but uh, politics is the category. That doesn't necessarily make me the most qualified, however. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. But we'll do it anyway. It's me, <laughs> it is you, Rafe. Okay. It is me. Now, choose an egghead, and it can't be Chris, so any of the other four going up there from Barry, Pat, Judith, or Kevin. We'll go for Pat. You're going to go for Pat? Okay. Yeah. The uh, winner of Are You an Egghead? And uh, let's have Rafe and Pat then into the question room, please. Rafe. Politics, as you say, you study that, and uh, history. And uh, would you like to go first or second? I think I'll go first. Good luck, Ray. First question then on politics. This is it. What name is given to the economic theory that if you give tax breaks and benefits to the rich, prosperity will eventually find its way to the middle classes and the poor? Seep down, drip down, or trickle down? Um, I'm pretty certain it's not seep down um trickle, trickle down is the usual expression drip down i think i'll go for uh trickle down trickle down economics is the right answer yes well done look at that tricky enough and pat sir shridath rampal of guyana don mckinnon of new zealand and kamala sharma of india have all been secretary generals of which international organization the commonwealth the United Nations or Amnesty International? Well, none of them meet the brief for Secretary General of the UN. There's been six or seven of those very famous names. I'm not sure of all the people who've been on, at the top of Amnesty, but I know that Don McKinnon of New Zealand was recently uh, the main man in the Commonwealth. So I think they're Secretary General of the, Generals of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth. That's correct, Pat. Yep, well done. All square. And back to you, Rafe. 
who was the co-founder and first leader of Northern Ireland's Social Democratic and Labour Party in 1970? John Hume, Jerry Fitt or Ian Paisley? Jerry Fitt, haven't, haven't heard of, I have to say. Um, John Hume and Ian Paisley. I think I'm going to go for Ian Paisley. Okay, Ian Paisley. It most certainly isn't. No, um, and uh, Pat, uh, well, you know a bit about Irish politics? Well, both Hume and Fitt were active in uh, Catholic politics in Northern Ireland. So uh, I can imagine being either, I, I think I'd probably go for Jerry Fitt, but I wouldn't be very confident. They yeah, were both it, big men. Yeah, that's right, Jerry Fitt. I think John Hume took over from him. Uh, Jerry Fitt is the answer we're looking for, not Ian Paisley. So uh, for Rafe and your question, second question, Pat, who became the first Clyde Cymru MP when he won a by-election in Carmarthen in July 1966? Is it Rodri Morgan, Emery Hughes or Gwynfor Evans? I think Rodri Morgan is a much more modern figure. I think he is still active in Welsh politics. I don't know much about Emery Hughes, but Gwynfor Evans rings a bell. I think he may be the first Plaid Cymru MP. Gwynfor Evans. Okay, other ones? Yeah. 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 It is the right answer. Yes, you have two. And Rafe, same position as Philip was in. You've got to get this one, your third one. Who was the Prime Minister of Spain from 1996 to 2004? Is it Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera, Jose Maria Aznar, or Jose Manuel Barroso? Gosh, um, which Jose? Jose. Um, I'm going to go for Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera. Okay, Primo de Rivera. It is, though, <laughs> Jose Maria Aznar, uh, Prime Minister of Spain from 96 to 2004. Exactly the same pattern as the previous round. Same scoring pattern and same result. The egghead goes through. Pat, you're through to the final round. And Rafe, you're going to sit it out. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, two of the sugar lumps now dissolved by the eggheads. The eggheads are all still there. And our next head-to-head -head coming up is science. Who'd like to play this? And the remaining sugar lumps are James, Christina or Trey? Christina, I think. I'll give it a go. You give it a go. You're I'll pretty confident, Christina. Who would you like to play from the eggheads? Chris and Pat have played, so you've got Kevin, Judith, or Barry. I think Kevin looks quite. Quite what? Orange. Yeah, go for it, Kevin. Come on. He's shaking like a leaf. Yeah, the four times World Quiz champion. Christina and Kevin, into the question room, please. Christina, tell me about the apprentice experience. Do you, I mean, do you feel it was, in your business career, a help or a hindrance? Does it open doors or does it make people think, oh, well, you know, the apprentice, what's that really? I, like, I had a, over 140 job offers from that programme, so certainly in my case, um, I, you know, I did really, really well, but um, it just depends on how you kind of portray yourself. Now, if you're like um, Philip with the pants man, then maybe your future's not so bright. But... <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, you know, because... Philip did say earlier on that he yeah. was going to show that he was better than the rest of us, so I've got to get him back. You've got a border and bust up coming on here. <laughs> I can see this. Yeah. Okay, well, we will fire one of you at the end. Now, you've got to decide. Do you want to go first or second? I think going first hasn't been very lucky for us so far, so let's go for second this time. Thank you. Bring Kevin in there, Mr. Orange. And uh, Kevin, first question then to you. In computing, what term is used to refer to a small portable device which connects to a laptop and allows the user to connect to the internet from any location with mobile phone network coverage. Is it dingle, dangle or dongle? Well, I suppose it could dingle and dangle, but I think it's a dongle. Do you dongle when you're on your travels to keep up with...? No, not really. I, I just I find lumping a laptop around a bit of a, a bit of a burden, really. I, so I'm not going to sort of downsize at some time. So. Anyway, it is dongle is correct, yes. So, first one to you and Nassau, Christina trying to kick herself there, knew, knew that, but um, first question for you, see how you do with this. What name is usually given to a medical device which uses electrical impulses to regulate the beating of the heart? Roadrunner, pacemaker or heat seeker? I am so, so lucky with that question, it's a lovely question and it's definitely pacemaker. It definitely is, yeah, pacemaker's correct, so you have one each. Uh, Kevin, the canary belongs to which family of birds? 
Finch, wren, or tit? The canary belongs to which family of birds? Um, I think a canary is a, is a finch. And the answer is finch. That is correct. Well done, Kevin. Two to you. And Christina's second question. In which year did the Chernobyl nuclear disaster take place? 1984, 1986, or 1988? Oh, that's cruel. I don't think it was 1988 because I might be wrong, but my son was born that year, so I'm kind of thinking I remember it. Um, there's not much logic in that, but you're right. 1986 or 1984 then. Um, oh dear. I'm going to go for 1984 and smile. <laughs> Don't say it's 88. <laughs> no, it's 86, which I thought you were going to go for. 86, Chernobyl. But uh, let's see how, see how Kevin does with this one. Kevin, what was the most significant invention of French scientist and engineer Georges Claude, who lived from 1870 until 1960? Neon lighting, stainless steel or radar? I think the other two were both actually British inventions. Get a bit of patriotism in. Uh, this was neon lighting, George Claude. Neon lighting. Here's the right answer, Kevin. Well done. <laughs> it's bye bye to Christina. It's just not going right for the sugar lumps. Means no place for you in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, the sugar lumps have now lost three brains from the final round. The eggheads haven't lost any. So last chance to knock an egghead out, sugar lumps. And the next category is sports. And we've got James oh, or Trey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Right. I think this one's going to be James. I'm a sportsman, as you can see. So yeah. um, yeah, that'll be me. OK, James, now which egghead would you like to play? The remaining eggheads are Judith or Barry? Judith. 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 Yeah. It's fierce as it all. It's fierce as it all. Judith. Yeah. It's always me. <laughs> Don't you do so well, Judith? You surprised them. I hate sport. James and Judith, into the question room, please. So, James, if you were allowed to have another go at The Apprentice, if you wanted to do it, what, what would you do differently? How would you conduct yourself differently? I think I would have taken it a little bit more seriously. I think Sir Alan thought, because I was a bit of a, a jester and a joker on there, that I didn't have sort of uh, legitimate intentions, but that really wasn't the case. So I think if I could do it all again, I'd maybe a bit more kind of a serious chap. Yeah, I mean, that's the difficulty of that show, isn't it? Because there is no audience participation. I mean, sitting at home, you came across as, you know, really likeable chap, you know, everyone would like to get on with you, but we don't have any say. It's all down to what one man thinks, isn't it? That's it. If you can get on his side, I think maybe he kept me in towards the end because he sort of saw a little bit of hope in me, but unfortunately, it, it had, that had kind of diminished by the end. Now, tell me a bit more about you. I love your CV. I mean, for this <laughs> round, football referee. That's correct, yeah. I've been a referee for about 15 years. I've given up now just because I tend to get people shouting you're fired at me whenever I blow my whistle. Of course. So um, I've had to pack that in. So I've taken up um, snooker. Right, very active then. Yeah, that's right. Snooker refereeing or playing? No, playing. Uh, OK. Now, do you want to go first or second, James? I think I'll go first. OK, good luck, James. And it is sport as we know. And first question is about rugby. In rugby union, the Calcutta Cup is contested between England and which other country? Ireland, Wales or Scotland? I was hoping India was going to come up for the Calcutta Cup, but it hasn't. So Ireland, I'm not so sure. I guess when you're at school and you do a multiple choice, you can never go wrong with picking C. So in that instance, I'm going to pick Scotland. Is this, right? this, is, this is the trick for getting through multiple choices, isn't it? Yeah, it works, yeah. It has Always done, yeah, it is the right answer, yes. The Calcutta Cup between England and Scotland. <laughs> well, they're giving your secrets away. And um, Judith, maybe she'll employ it. Who knows? Billy, Doc Trove, Daryl Harper and Rudy Kurtzen are all umpires in which sport? Cricket, tennis or baseball? Um, can you say their names again? Doc Trove? Billy Doctrove, Daryl Harper, and Rudy Kurtz. Oh, I know, that's cricket. Yes, it is. Yeah. The right answer, yes. <laughs> or cricket umpires. And uh, back to you, James. Which gymnast won two gold medals for Britain at the European Artistic Gymnastics Championships in Milan in April 2009? Beth Tweddle, Rebecca Downey, or Hannah Whelan? I'm not familiar with any of these ladies. Um... Beth sounds the sort of girl who would be a gymnast, so I'm going to go for Beth. 
Beth, sounds like she would be a gymnast. And uh, Beth is the right answer. Yes, well done. Okay, you've got the lead. And Judith, in which sport does the referee wear a silk kimono and carry a dagger that was originally supplied according to legend so that he could disembowel himself if he gave a missed call? Sumo wrestling, judo or kickboxing? Oh, goodness. Um, I can't think of a referee in judo. Or I think it sounds as if it might be sumo wrestling because it's so ancient. So I think I'm going to say sumo wrestling. Okay, sumo for your dagger yeah. and kimono. It's the right answer, Judith. Well done. Both going really well. This is the high scoring round. Looks like so far, certainly for the sugar lumps. Uh, avoided that curse of the second question and if you get this you might win the round James. In hockey an umpire issues an official warning to a player by showing what colour card? Brown, green or blue? Uh, again I was hoping that uh, yellow might have come out because that would have been the logical answer. Um, green sounds like it's almost too sort of positive a, uh, a colour to uh, like you know it's green for go so I don't think it's green. Brown or blue? Gonna go for blue. Blue card. Yes. An official warning. Avoided the curse of the second question, but if hit the hex of the third, it's green. The one you discounted. Green card for a for a warning. Um, but it means Judith can win the round if she gets this. What number shirt did West Ham retire in 2008 in honour of Bobby Moore, who played over 500 games for the club? Two, four, or six? I have the faintest idea. Um, um, it's just a matter of picking. Um, perhaps he was number six. A legend that was Bobby Moore. 500 games for West Ham. In the number six shirt, it's the right answer. Well done, oh. Judith. Oh. James Head goes down. It means you have won a sport round, Judith. Look how happy oh, you are. It's almost worth it, James, just to see that beam on Judith. Oh, I'm delighted yeah. for her. Yeah. <laughs> Such sincerity. It means you won't be playing in the final round. Will you both please come back and join your teams? So this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which as always is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So James, Rafe, Christina and Philip from the Sugar Lumps, would you leave the studio, please? So you're playing to win the Sugar Lumps £1,000 for your chosen charity. Chris, Barry, Pat, Judith and Kevin... You're playing for something which money can't buy. The Egghead's reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge and you are allowed to confer. Trey, the question is, is your one brain better than the Egghead's five? And Trey, do you want to go first or second? I'll go first. Best of luck, Trey. General knowledge. Let's see if you can beat the Egghead's. And this is the first question. What name is often given to a financial backer of a theatrical enterprise? Angel, saint or god? Is there a difference between a financial backer for a, a theatrical enterprise to any other enterprise? Because otherwise it would be an angel. God doesn't seem to make any sense. Saint, possibly. Well, in standard, if you have an investor within business, it would be an angel. So I would assume it would be the same, an angel. An angel is the right answer. Yeah, well done, Trey. Successfully negotiated and eggheads. You wonder where the yellow went. It was part of an advertising slogan in the 1950s for which type of product? Washing powder, eye drops or toothpaste? You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. It was a toothpaste. What happened to Pepsi then? Didn't work for it then, did it? It's disappeared. <laughs> Don't have people like me singing it. <laughs> no, absolutely. So, okay, uh, it is toothpaste. It's the right answer, eggheads. Okay, back to you, Trey. Good start. And uh, let's see if you can get your second one. Too many shadows, whispering voices, faces on posters, too many choices. Is a line from which UK hits single from the Pet Shop Boys. It's Sin, West End Girls, or Love Comes Quickly. For some reason, I don't know, love comes quickly, it doesn't sound right, it sounds like it's a bit more sinister than that. I've got no logic at all, because I've never heard anything by the Pet Shop Boys, I don't think, apart from West End Girls, and if I did, I wouldn't remember the lines, so... Let's go West End Girls. 
bit of a West End theme with angels and uh, was West End theatres. It's the right answer. Yeah, West End girls. Well done. Too many shadows, whispering voices, faces on posters. Too many choices. Well, of the three, you got the right one. And Eggheads, your second question. What is the architectural term for the fine plaster containing gypsum and pulverised marble used for covering walls and making mouldings and cornices? Is it parget, adobe or stucco? Adobe is mud bricks. I think pargeting is what you put on the outside of houses, but the fine plaster is stucco. Stucco. It is stucco. It's the right answer. Well done. Two each and going very, very well, Trey. If you get this, you might just beat the eggheads with it. What name was given to the type of one-piece zip-up suit worn by Winston Churchill during long nights spent working through air raids in World War II? Shell suit, siren suit or monkey suit? Well, the common sense answer sounds like siren suit. But then, is it too obvious? Shell suit, I don't... Oh, monkey suit. No, siren suit, no monkey suit. Oh, it's done. Monkey suit, uh, it's what you said about first instincts. It is a siren suit. I heard you saying to Christina, you know, when she went uh, 84 instead of 86 on Chernobyl, and you did it successfully with West End Girls, that was your first thought, you were so close. Such a logical answer as well, it's just trying yeah. to be too clever for my own good. Just jumped into your head then, monkey suit, and jumped out, and too late to withdraw it, unfortunately, and um, Eggheads, a chance then to win it. In the song, Who Will Buy, from the musical Oliver, what type of fruit is described by one of the vendors as ripe? Is it strawberries, plums, or apples? I don't think I've ever heard of apples described as right. Mm. Or strawberries for that matter. Mm. But plums uh, would be my. Well, think sing the song in your head. Well, don't know, don't know the words inside. Mm. Yes. Mm. Wonderful morning, mm. names are high. I swear I could fly. Who will buy something, 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 and put I it in a box for me? I don't think I don't think plums scan. Oh, scan. How does it go again? Who will buy this wonderful morning? I'm so high. I swear I could fly. Who will buy blankety blank blank and put them in a box for me? I think that's how it goes. Something Stro like that. I'm, I'm pretty certain strawberries are mentioned in that song. Yeah. Okay, so why? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I felt strawberries too. Yeah. But I was just saying, plums is very right, but it does scan. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Strawberries, because of the number of syllables, would. Yeah. So, and you put strawberries in boxes, pun it's too, don't you? Okay, okay. strawberries it is. Well, there's a small element of doubt, but we've all finally... Small? You well, need Daphne there, your musical expert. She's not there. Oh, our food expert. <laughs> no, but we've all finally decided on strawberries. Didn't know the exact line, and the eggheads come up with strawberries. You have come up with the right answer, eggheads. You've won. <laughs> hey, Trey, that was so close. Such a muppet. <laughs> Still beating yourself up. It's only a game. But listen, it's been great fun having you here, all the apprentices. Very nice to see you here and uh, tales of times on The Apprentice and what's happened to you subsequently. Thank you very much indeed for having a go Thank and you. trying to beat the eggheads. It just wasn't to be on the day. But the eggheads have done what comes naturally to them and they reign supreme over Quizland once again. I'm afraid you haven't won the thousand pounds. So that means the money will be heading to children in need to add to this year's appeal. Eggheads, congratulations. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads until then. Goodbye.